So welcome everyone. My name is Emily. I'm a recruitment officer here at Inks. Thank you so much for joining us for our all virtual open house. Um, I have enabled the closed captioning function for you. So if you'd like to turn that on, please do. Um, we aren't able to control it. It's auto-populated. So uh, we can't guarantee accuracy. Um, but I will also start with a land acknowledgement here. So we acknowledge that our campus at Kings University College is situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Lenapawak, and Adirondack peoples, all of whom have long-standing relationships with the land of southwestern Ontario and the city of London. So I am joined this morning by Dr. Virtue from the Department of History here at Kings. Um, so without further ado, I will turn it over to him and we will leave questions for the end, if you think of any throughout the presentation, please use the Q&A function at the bottom and we will get to it there for you. Um, Dr. Virtue, over to you. All right, thank you, uh, Emily. And thank you um, to those of you who came out to, uh, to today's presentation and uh, the King's Open House. Um, uh, my name is Nicholas Virtue. I'm a professor in history here at King's, um, specializing in Italian fascism, imperialism, and uh, the Second World War. So I tend to teach uh, in those areas, uh, especially you know European history um, and uh, uh, the history of fascism and warfare. Today, I'm going to tell you a bit about doing history at the university level, kind of generically, but also specifically um, about what we do in history here at King's and why you should take some history classes with us and maybe even think about uh, majoring or minoring in, uh, in history at King's. So yeah, I'll try to leave some time for uh, questions um, at the end and I'm going to uh, start sharing my screen here as well. There we go. So why? Should we take history in the beginning, in the first place? Well, you know, if you love history, um, if you if you get satisfaction out of that sense of exploring and discovering, learning about people and places from the past, um, then there's no reason not to to take history. And really, my best advice to anyone entering university is to first and foremost, follow your passions. You're gonna have a way better time at university as a result, and you're gonna succeed as a result. Um, for me, what brought me to history coming out of high school was the stories. I knew I loved history. I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I knew I loved history. Um, and so I came for the stories, but I left uh, after my four years at undergrad um, with a, a toolkit. A uh, toolkit that uh, you know actually opens a lot of doors to many career paths because because history students um, you know they learn how to argue logically and based on evidence and uh, they learn how to write they learn how to write well and communicate well in you know everyday language towards a general audience and this is something that um, that. Uh, uh, employers appreciate. Um, but it's also, you know, taking history uh, also leaves you with a toolkit for, for navigating the present as well, right? For understanding uh, the present through the, the past. And you don't have to delve very far into the news or, you know, into social media these days to realize that history is important. And people think it's important. Um, historians and historical perspectives, historical context are, it seems today, more in demand than ever, right? Historians are being asked to help explain how we got here. Why does the world look the way it does right now? Um, we're called upon to separate truth from myth um, and to offer informed comparisons to the past. Um, and I've picked some, uh, some photos here just to, uh, to kind of reflect um, how that past uh, is, is very much alive 
uh, in the present today, right? So in the, the top left there, the, um, the uh, photo from the 1918 influenza pandemic, um, you know, where, which certainly reveals that a lot of, the, of our experiences in the past two years are not wholly unprecedented. And yet, I don't know how many um, art, news articles I've come across um, that, uh, that use that language, unprecedented. Um, and of course, as Remembrance Day uh, approaches, you know, historians reflect not just on the, the, the lives and the events that we're commemorating on that day, but also part of the historian's job is to analyze um, and trace how the meaning and methods of commemoration have shifted um, over time. And of course, the so-called culture wars that we witness um, in many parts of the world today are really, they, these culture wars could really be defined as history wars, right? These are battles over what version of history um, people choose to privilege or to read and, and write about. History is being mobilized for good or for ill is being used and misused by uh, various political, cultural, and social actors. And again, we get some examples in the, in the photos here. So history students, um, you know, history students gain an understanding of this shifting constructed nature of history as well as a grounding in historical context, historical knowledge, and that evidence-based reasoning that's needed to confront these issues and to advocate effectively as engaged citizens. And employers recognize that there is value in this broad-based, flexible toolkit that we are imparting um, in history at King's. History has traditionally been seen as um, a very useful springboard into graduate programs or for professional training. So especially um, for law, education, um, advocacy in terms of working with NGOs, uh, but also for the civil service and uh, business leadership, communications, uh, historians, history students, history graduates are all very well represented in these fields. And I could give you some personal uh, examples um, just from my own life, my own acquaintances. I mean, my, my grandfather started, he was a history uh, major and uh, he ended up uh, uh, working as a lawyer and eventually ended his career as a judge on the Court of Queen's Bench. Um, but also more recently, uh, if I think of some of my, my classmates and friends, with history degrees, you know, some of them uh, uh, went on to continue um, uh, teaching at university or college as professors, but also working um, with, still within the university environment um, in administration as advisors, for example. I have another um, friend who uh, who used his history degree to uh, um, uh, become a uh, major executive now at with BMO in, in Toronto, uh, another who does research and writes reports for Ontario Health, uh, another who's a staffer for the Federal Liberal, Liberal Party in Ottawa, and uh, another who is uh, a, an editor and uh, communications director for a nonprofit uh, company um, out of Guelph. And you can go on to our department website and check out some of the alumni profiles um, there for kind of similar similar stories and examples that fit all these all these boxes that you're looking at on on this slide. So hopefully by now I've convinced you to think about history as a, a worthwhile discipline to pursue. Why should you take it at King's? I think one of the one of our main strengths um, that sets us apart is our unique size. So the, and I'm talking about the size of the King's campus and student body, but also the size of our, uh, of our department, of our faculty. It's, um, you know, it's a small enough department that 
you end up getting to know your professors quite well. Um, and, and we get to know you quite well. Uh, you enjoy the benefits of small class sizes. The largest of our classes is about 60 students um, in first year. And they get smaller after that. Um, and yet, yet our department is large enough that we nonetheless offer quite a broad range of expertise from a genuinely global perspective. We have full-time and part-time faculty, and you see some of us pictured uh, here. Um, but we have full-time and part-time faculty specializing in uh, er topics and areas like genocide, fascism, warfare, uh, religion, terrorism and conspiracy theories, human rights, migration, slavery, memory, and, and public history. And, uh, and as I say, from a, glo a genuinely global um, perspective with uh, um, experts in, in expertise in European history, East Asian history, um, Canada, the United States, also Latin American history. And we tend to punch above our weight. All of us are uh, very active publishing um, academic books and articles. A few of the, the, of, of the books uh, I've, uh, I've included on this slide here, um, but also a number of us are you know, regularly engaged with the public through um, you know, news interviews, uh, op-eds and, uh, and social media. And we, uh, you know, we, we bring this expertise and our enthusiasm, our love for history to our, uh, uh, and our love for storytelling to our courses. Um, it, it's really a constantly evolving and changing list. But what I've got up here is a good indication of you know, what, uh, what, what topics we're teaching um, this year, especially in the, the third and fourth year classes, they tend to uh, shift around a bit more. Um, but our, I think that our first year courses are quite, uh, quite unique and really set things apart. Um, it, we, these courses allow for uh, really deep dives into thematic topics. Um, so for example, the one that I regularly teach is the, the totalitarian age course. And it, here we have a full year, uh, eight months to, um, to, to delve into and, and compare the three European totalitarian regimes of, of Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini. And, uh, and, and so that's just a, a level of, of depth on a relatively narrow specific topic that you don't tend to get at the first year level. Um, and as I said, you know, these first year courses, the, the largest group that I'll have in that totalitarian age um, class is 60 students. And within that, we break it up into three tutorial groups that meet every week. Um, so looking at, you know, these tutorials of 20 students or fewer that, uh, and, and it's there where we really already in first year get really hands on in terms of working on developing this, this, this toolkit, the historian's craft. Um, and, uh, and where we have, where I'll bring in, you know, uh, uh, documents uh, that I've found in the Italian military archives and translated into English. And, uh, and you know, my students get to, um, get to work, you know, get to be the historian and, and work with some of the same material that I'm working with um, in, my own, uh, in my own research. Uh, another interesting course that uh, we've offered the last two years and hopefully will continue is uh, the history of now um, in the first year list here. Uh, Professor Broad is currently teaching that and it's basically about putting, you know, select current events within their historical context. Um, so this year, I think he's looking at the uh, Black Lives Matter, at Trumpism, at statues and uh, climate change. Uh, uh, for example, um, our you know second year. By the time you get into the second year offerings, this is where you're kind of getting that more broad-based grounding in in the area surveys, which um, kind of give you the background you need to succeed at the third and fourth year level, where we really get more more specialized um, with these uh, fo fo more focused uh, seminars.
a number of our courses are either completely experience-based or have experiential learning components built in to them. Uh, so for example, you know, some of our courses will, will take students to local uh, museums or archives or cemeteries to actually um, to, to examine uh, uh, site, historical sites and, and handle historical artifacts. Um, it, sometimes we, you know, we, we don't, we, we don't always have the traditional um, research essays as our main assignments. Uh, sometimes we bring elements of creative writing in there. Uh, we've, uh, some of our courses have produced plays, even film documentaries, um, things like that. As I say, some of our courses have, are, are totally geared or totally built around uh, experiential learning. Um, it, this spring, uh, pandemic restrictions permitting. We're going to have a group in the, the World Wars in History, Memory, and Reconciliation course is actually going to conclude with a trip to visit the battlefields in Belgium uh, and, and France. So we're really looking forward to, to that. Um, and, and there's individual opportunities for experiential learning as well. Um, so you can do independent studies or, uh, or, or we have at the third year level a workplace learning um, uh, course that can be arranged with the, uh, um, you know, either through um, an internship or uh, with arrangements with another, with, with one of our professors. So for example, I had, you know, a, a student who knew he wanted to go on to do graduate school. And, uh, and so we set up a workplace learning course for him where um, he worked as, uh, as my research assistant, helped me on a, a project. And at the end, um, with, uh, uh, with funding from King's was able to um, accompany me to present our findings at the, uh, at the annual meeting of the American Historical Association in Washington, DC. And finally, um, you know, there's also extracurricular opportunities for travel experiences um, through the History Club, which has historically been quite active at, uh, at King's. Obviously the um, COVID pandemic has uh, made things difficult the past couple of years, but hopefully the History Club will be back up and running uh, in full swing shortly and uh, they can get back to doing their, their regular trips to um, uh, Ottawa, Washington DC or places they've uh, been to in the past, often in conjunction with the political um, science club. So, um, you know, whether you're talking about these, those first year, second year, small group tutorials, our upper year seminars, these independent study options or, or extracurricular options. You know, our program really is centered on this kind of hands-on practically oriented learning. And we find that that's an effective way to impart that toolkit that I'm talking about, but it also ends up being a lot of fun, a lot of fun for the students and for the, uh, for the professors um, as well. And it's a flexible program, um, should you choose history, should you choose to major or minor in history, uh, there is a lot of flexibility in terms of how the modules are set up. We can be happy to address any questions about that. Uh, it, it's, it's very easy to combine history with other programs at King's, since we get a lot of students who, um, do, who are doing uh, double majors. So uh, if, um, you know, if you'd like to learn more, if you're interested in learning more about doing history at King's, please check out our website. I've got it listed on this slide here. Um, also, please feel free to reach out either to myself, Nicholas Virtue, my email's at the bottom, or to our department chair, uh, Professor Soulard La France, um, whose email I've also included on this slide. We'd be delighted to hear from you. So uh, I'll leave that slide up for just a few seconds and uh, be happy to take any questions if we have time for them. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we will open it up for questions now. So please use the <clears throat> Q&A function at the bottom of your screen there to ask any questions. Um, but I will start it off. So when you were a student, what made you excited to study history and continue now teaching? Mm -hmm. um, well, I was 
always fascinated by uh, by by military history. So I got into it, you know, I liked uh, watching war films and playing war games on the com on my computer, right? And and uh, so I was I just was fascinated in that type of history and that got me into it. Um, and then, you know, I, I I found out that that history was about a lot more than just the the narrative of of the the battles, right, or things like that, which I still enjoy learning about. But um, you know, I think you'll find that in in the university um, setting, it's a more it's you know what we're focused on is less. Do you know the specific order of of dates, um, and and it's more about uh, explaining the uh, the the motivations. Uh, behind historical actors. I mean, that's what fascinates me the most. And what my research focuses on is, you know, why did people do the things they do? Why did they make the decisions they did at the time? And it's always, the answer is always so complex. Um, and, uh, and so it really is, I think I got, you know, I, I came to history with this kind of simplistic notion of what, of, of, of of telling a story, and that that's always there. The storytelling part is always there, but then there's there's also this this the, the bigger aspect of you know explaining and understanding human behavior, and that's what got me what got me hooked, and why I'm still doing it uh, today. I think. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I took some courses in history during my time at Kings, <clears throat> and it was never one of my majors or minors, but I think I took enough courses that it may well have, should have been. Um, yeah, they're always super interesting. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in yet. So I'll just ask you one final question then. Um, what advice would you give any first year students or students coming out of high school right now in terms of picking a program or um, yeah, picking their university? Well, I would reiterate what I said earlier there that, that you should, you should go with what interests you and not necessarily with what you think is going to um, give you, you know, get you a, a, into a well-paying job the quickest. Because um, first of all, like, you know, a lot of those, the, the statistics don't bear this out that, <laughs> that, uh, you know, disciplines in the humanities, or including uh, history, don't get you into fulfilling employment. Um, so there's a lot of myths there, and uh, and 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 second of all, like I said, you know, you're you're going to be much more successful at university if you do what you're interested in, and then success at university then is going to set you up for for success later on down down the road. So, you know, I think, I think following, if you, if you have interest, if you have a passion, following those is always the, the best place to, to start. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, I would absolutely agree with all of that. Um, looks like we're almost at our time for today. Thank you again for being with us and sharing your expertise on History at Kings. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us today. If you have any other questions after, um, after today, feel free to reach out to us. We are always happy to answer your questions and provide you with more information about Kings. And be sure to go over to the Experience Kings Instagram page. We have lots of giveaways going on there throughout the day. Um, so be sure to go check that out. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good rest of the day, everyone. Thank you.